Hi, I'm Angie and you're watching Dante's 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 Vaccinating. The WBC president, Marcus Suleiman, has spoken out in support of Tyson Fury following the new allegations made about his failed drug test back in 2015 with Yukata. For the people that might not be informed, Tyson Fury failed the drug test in February 2015 for steroids. A urine sample from Fury reported the presence of elevated levels of nondrolone, metabolites in his system. However, for Tyson Fury to beat the case, he used the oldest excuse in the book, which is blame it on contaminated meat. I mean, we thought that was only in Mexico City, but even Tyson Fury used the dustiest excuse in the book and got away with it by blaming it on a wild boar. But Martin Carefoot, a farmer that's 70 years old that actually provided the statements he came out last week with Daily Mail stating that he agreed to accept 25,000 pounds in order to provide false statements saying he supplied the wild boar. He later on added that he never once had a wild boar nor ever received a payment and he felt very guilty. So he wanted to let the public know the truth. Furthermore, thanks to Carefoot false statements, Tyson Fury was able to beat the case against Yukata. Matter of fact, in December 2017, Yukata and Fury issued a joint statement revealing that he have agreed and compromised resolution in which Fury received a two-year ban from the sport and he was free to fight after that. However, sadly for Tyson Fury, Yukata is now reopening the case right after Carefoot's statements, claiming that he provided false statements and Tyson Fury paid him to lie in court, which is a criminal act. So Tyson Fury is facing an eight year ban from the sport of boxing or to be suspended from the sport of boxing period. However, the WBC president, Suleiman, has instantly made it clear that he is standing by his champion, where he stated, and I quote, my first reaction is, what credibility could someone who allegedly received money to lie have now? This seemed to be a shakedown. This matter happened many years ago. The WBC has to go by the multiple tests that Fury has performed in the clean boxing program and all have been negative. End of the quote. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the WBC once supported Canelo Alvarez right after he failed the drug test leading up to Gennady Golovkin rematch, claiming that he not a cheater, even though he just failed a drug test for taking Combuterol, claiming that it was because of the contaminated meat in Mexico. And the WBC organization came out stating that they standing by Canelo Alvarez ride or die because according to them, they don't believe he's a cheater. Even though Canelo Alvarez has all this money, but he don't have a personal chef. He don't have his own farm but he's out here eating them tacos in Mexico City. Sounds like the corruption and boxing is kicking in yet again because Tyson Fury is all the way across the world. However, he also failed a drug test and blamed it on contaminated me. Him and his cousin and his best friend, Sandras. So like I said, this is not a coincidence and that's a fact. And since y'all believe in Google, Google that shit. To this day, the WBC is trying to cover the track record of these cheaters. I mean, it's beyond me that the WBC allowed and increased the computer roll limit a fighter could have in his system. However, they have a clean boxing program. That's obviously a joke because the WBC clearly has an agenda and they covering up for these fighters that's obviously cheating in front of our faces. But the million dollar question, 
Why does Suleiman believe Tyson Fury is so innocent when he failed in the past for taking steroids? It ain't like this is his first time at the dancing table. So when the farmer comes out claiming that Tyson Fury paid him in order to lie, for Suleiman to say, well, he lying, this is fake news, whatever the case might be, y'all have to keep in mind, this farmer has no reason to lie now. Because if he lied then, because he was getting paid in order to lie, why is he lying now? And if it's fake news, why is this farmer named Carefoot is in court with Yukata? And why is Yukata reopening the case? The logical answer and the obvious answer is Carefoot statements has truth to it. Because Yukata wouldn't take him seriously and reopen the case if this is a bunch of false statements. His name is in court and keep in mind the 70 year old farmer has nothing to gain. And if he's lying, he could get sued and locked up. And who wants to be locked up at 70 years old? So like I said, Tyson Fury hope insurance is kicking in yet again. His hope insurance is better than Geico. And since Tyson Fury has the complexion for the protection, the WBC and many more organizations are doing their best to protect this man. But you could hide from the truth. However, you can never hide the truth because at the end of the day, the truth will always come out. And Carefoot came out with the truth, but who knew the truth was gonna come out from a farmer that's 70 years old. So shame on y'all people that's covering up for this cheater, allegedly, because you are innocent to proven guilty, at least in the United States. However, if you a fighter from the hope list, you could be guilty, but they're going to prove you innocent. And if you're a fighter from the coincidental list, it ain't a coincidence. You could be innocent and they're going to prove you guilty. So with that being stated, I say that because of the obvious reason Tyson Fury, his track record speak for itself. They covered up for this man failing a drug test, blaming on cocaine, dismissing his two year ban covering it up with the cocaine addiction. And what makes it worse is the fact that Tyson Fury tampered with his glove against Deontay Wilder. And what's funny about that situation is the fact that there's hard evidence right in front of our faces and they still haven't even talked about it, let alone prove this man guilty. They try to cover up for this man as much as possible. That's why old media haven't talked about it yet. This is the equivalence of a robber that goes to the bank and robs the bank. And there's footage of this man robbing the bank with a gun. And you can see his face and the gun by his waist. But they don't do anything about it. Can you believe that? That's the equivalent of what they're doing for Tyson Fury. And what makes it worse is the fact that Tyson Fury track record is so dirty that they even have a man that's a witness that this man failed the drug test and lied in court, which is a criminal act. However, they still covering up for this man. And that's why the WBC should be ashamed of themselves for putting a black eye on the sport of boxing. I mean, the WBC is the same organization that granted Canelo Alvarez his request and gave him a fake belt a french fries belt to duck a fighter from the coincidentalist Charlo. They granted the same thing for Lomachenko. I'm sorry, Nomachenko. When he requested a french fries belt to avoid a fighter from the coincidentalist Devin Haney. And what do those fighters have in common? They from the hopeless, both Canelo Alvarez and Lomachenko. ESPN erased Lomachenko loss. Canelo Alvarez fails a drug test and then six months later, he free to fight. And now the WBC clears Tyson Fury name of any wrongdoing, even though he failed for steroids in the past. So like I said, at the end of the day, you could hide from the truth, but you can't hide the truth. And our key always preaches the truth. I don't just report. I'm out here preaching. That's what the sport of boxing got me doing. 
So with that being stated, subscribe below if you want to know some shit about boxing. Word to my man, Roger Mayweather. May he rest in peace. Subscribe below if you're trying to get smarter by the minute. If you're trying to get dumber by the second, don't. And listen to these decafs, a.k.a. Dumb Casual Ass Fans slash Old Media and the WBC Organization, so on and so forth. Shout out to DBN for being the entrepreneur of new media that I'm a part of. If you're a casual fan and you want to be a hardcore, all you have to do is click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post to go live on Split Decision. It's a boxing debate slash talk show where our key is pound for pound number one, the past, the present, and the future. So if you even dream about and you have the thought of dethroning me, you better call in and apologize on Split Decision live every Sunday. So with that being stated, y'all saw how I did my own bro ski, my Aki. Professor Stevie Wonder Greasy. I chewed him up and spit him out like some M&Ms. I was like M&M on the mic. So if I do that to my own bro ski, picture what I'm a duty I decaps. So if you want to graduate from the IQ University, subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post or go live. Follow Luna Tune Boxing for the funniest boxing memes. Follow me too at IQ TV. And to be continued on the next episode of Aki Aki A. TV, peace, and we yachty. This is the Boxing Brotherhood. I keep stand for my brother, and we at you. With that being said, it's only one more thing to say. If any of you guys out there are looking to grow your new YouTube channel or your existing YouTube channel, you want to get some new subscribers, go ahead and contact me at Dante's Boxing Nation at gmail.com. If there's a website you want to promote or something you're trying to sell, or you just want to get your name out there, anything it is, contact me at Dante's Boxing Nation at gmail.com. Now, while I'm talking about that, I want you guys to make sure you subscribe to my man's YouTube channel, Nate Drink One. He has a great new YouTube channel. Uh, he does a podcast, really good podcast with a full panel. So seriously, guys, go over there and show that support. It don't take nothing but a second to just go over there and click on that subscribe button. It's called A Drink of Wisdom. And what I really like about it is it has a little bit of an ESPN type of feel to it. Like I said, it's a new channel for my man, Nate. So let's help him get to a thousand subscribers. I'll leave you guys with a clip of his actual podcast show. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Brief period of deliberation, Deontay Wilder has exercised his rematch option with Tyson Fury officially. The fight is scheduled to take place July 18th at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. The decision came just days after his loss, with Wilder seemingly thinking bad luck and circumstance had played a role in his loss last time. Fury will take the rematch and maybe one of the last fights we see the Gypsy King in. So, Drake, let's start with you, man. Is Wilder making a mistake by taking this rematch with Fury this soon? Before I get to the answer of that question, um, two things I want to hit on about that that first and second match. Um, it, it's been brought out that, that um, the Nevada Commission, PBC, top rank, they're waiting on a B sample from Tyson Fury from the second fight. Um, evidently, something was wrong with his A sample, so they had to confirm it with the B sample. If what's being said is true, then we're talking a whole nother scenario here. 